Hello and welcome to Real Menopause Talk, the finale of Season 3. My guest today is Sally Muller. Sally is CEO and co-founder of the brand Womanness, and both she and her business partner Michelle Jacobs take their responsibility towards helping and supporting women very seriously. Sally was suffering with poor sleep, mood swings and irritability, dry skin, and possibly the greatest symptom of all for her was a diagnosis of early onset osteoporosis. When she looked at various products available for perimenopause, she knew she had to do something, and the need to modernise menopause, and, as she puts it, spark menopositivity, was shrieking at her. And that is precisely what she set out to do. Before we get to the juicy bits, a reminder to visit our sponsor's website, CozyEarth.com, and check out Oprah Winfrey's favourite bedding. Cozy Earth has made it onto her favourites list for four years in a row. For a cracking 35% discount, use code MENOPAUSE at the checkout. And now for the last interview of the season, but stay tuned to the end for news of upcoming events and season four. Hi, Hattie. Hi, Sally. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You're based in California? I'm actually in Minnesota, you know, middle of the U.S. How is it there at the moment? It's nice. No uh, crazy stuff going on, really. It's just, it's like heading into the fall for us, so. Same here. Sally, to begin with, would you be able to tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your history, your background, family, and that kind of thing? Yeah, so I grew up in retail um, in the States. There's a, I'm sure you've heard of Target stores. Um, I, after college, I was recruited to Target headquarters and I learned how to be a merchant. And then I went over to the marketing team and loved being in marketing where I was, you know, creating brands and, you know, developing really incredible marketing campaigns. And so I did that for about 25 years in total at Target. And then I left to start my own business because I always felt like I was an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. you know, in my heart and soul. So I, at 45, started my own business and wanted to move to the brand side. So started to work on creating brands or um, taking existing brands and really you know, building them, right? And bringing them to retail. One was Who, What, Where, which actually we sold into Selfridges and Zalando in Europe. So I've had a lot of experience working with the UK retailers Mm -hmm. and enjoyed every minute. So bottom line is I've had like 35 or so years of just working on, you know, women's lifestyle brands. But I would say womanist really came from a personal story, my own journey through menopause and the struggles that I had when a doctor at the Mayo Clinic, which is a renowned medical institution in the States, Mm -hmm. suggested that I try some products that were available on Amazon. That's when I went, oh my gosh, I've got to reinvent this category. These products are not up to standards. Mm -hmm. And this is no disrespect on her taste level. It was just the best that she could find out there. So that was my, that was my aha moment. What was your experience then of perimenopause and whereabouts are you on the scale at the moment? Well, I'm way beyond, um, I'm in menopause, uh, several years into it. So I guess, um, I've heard a debate, there's no such thing as postmenopausal, but I would say I'm probably postmenopausal. I started perimenopause, I think, around 47. So definitely a little on the younger side, but I would say I had a lot of the usual symptoms that a lot of women experience, you know, erratic periods, of course, that's the first sign, I think. Definitely mood changes. Um, Now, I blamed it on work and travel. I was traveling a lot with my job and, you know, wasn't sleeping well. So didn't even realize that menopause was more than hot flashes. I thought it was, I thought it was just hot flashes. You know, no one really explained to me that it was all these other symptoms. So I just kept thinking it must be stress. It must be my job. And I didn't really do anything about it, to be honest. I just kind of struggled through life, honestly, very tired all the time and 
I think a little on the edgy side, not not to the public. I was always very nice. But at home, I was just, you know, probably a bear. And my husband put up with a lot of things. And, you know, it's it all past us. But that was really my main I didn't have hot flashes, but I definitely had night sweats. And I would wake up at 3am almost consistently every night. And again, didn't realize that was related to menopause. And then of course, low libido, you know, when you're tired, and you're just a little on edge, the last thing you want to do is have sex. So I was just really suffering from from that too. But a lot of it was related to vaginal dryness. And again, didn't realize that was part of menopause too. So the doctor at Mayo really educated me about all of these symptoms and that they were all connected back to menopause and perimenopause at the time. So it was it was such an enlightening appointment because no one had really explained this to me until she did. It seems for the vast majority of our generation that none of us had any idea of what to expect right. or even to expect something. And then finding information or knowing what was going on was almost impossible. And it's so easy to attribute so many of the symptoms, particularly ones that you're talking about, to life stresses, whether that's work or family or you know, whatever form it takes. Right. So knowing what is going on is often the first hurdle and then being able to work on it. So what did you do from there? Well, I I had my own professional path that I was going down, but then on the personal front, you know, I started to really think seriously about what she said in terms of, you know, I've got to start taking care of myself. I also realized at that point that I had the early onset of osteoporosis. So osteopenia, and that's been almost my biggest issue is dealing with that. So I started to try to take calcium and, and those kind of supplements to combat the advancement of that. But even that wasn't working. I had a whole nother journey around that because I had to go on a drug called a Fosomax. And then I took a shot called Prolia and that I had a, a really bad reaction to that. So I'm back to figuring out other ways to deal with my osteoporosis. But I would say overall, I've just been really more careful about investing in my own health and especially starting, you know, womanist has really shed a lot of light on how much we know. Mm -hmm. And if we knew more in our 30s and 40s, we would be in much better position to navigate menopause successfully. And so, you know, it's hard to separate my professional path and my personal path because it's all merging together. You know, the other thing I've done is, is really try to exercise more. I do Pilates two or three times a week. And a massage too really helps because in this lifestyle that I'm in, it's so intense and mm -hmm. creating a startup is very, very stressful. So even just knowing that it's okay to take time to do some of these self-care activities, it's really important. I think it's absolutely crucial at this stage of life and beyond to take really good care of ourselves because there right. may continue to be stresses, whether it's personal or work related. And so you've incorporated mm -hmm. more exercise, which is going to be hugely beneficial, obviously, right. but you've still got the work stresses. So massage balances that out. Yeah, so yes. tell everyone who hasn't yet discovered <laughs> womanness what it is and how it came to be and how you met Michelle Jacobs, your co-founder. Yeah, thank you. So again, when I was I was in that appointment at Mayo and I went home that night and I looked at the products she recommended that were available on Amazon. I remember saying to my husband, I'm never using any of these products. And again, it was no reflection on the doctor. It was just what was available in the market. And this is this is about four years ago now. So mm -hmm. it was, we call it a desert out there at that point. And I remember thinking here, I, I've been working on all these millennial brands and I love creating brands for women. Why am I not tackling the space for women like me? That was really, I think, 
again, a turning point in my own brain that I needed to really focus on this. And I had a full time job at the time. So I started kind of thinking about how I was going to take time to build this brand. And then on an upcoming trip to New York, I mentioned to Michelle, so we've been friends for about 15 or so years, professionally, you know, we, we knew each other on a personal level, we never worked together in the same company, but we always were comparing career notes and cheering each other on. And I mentioned to her about this idea of really tackling the menopause space. And she was so excited. She's a little younger than I am, but she said, I see all these women in for, you know their 40s and 50s leaving their corporate jobs mm-hmm. on the search to do what they've always wanted to do, feeling like it's time to take care of myself or leave something that I'm not, you know, maybe I'm not in a, a great relationship or in a job that I'm fulfilled to be in. So all of these changes were happening amongst her friend group. We took that insight around this change that happens to women, not just menopausal change, but the psychological change that goes with with the stage of life, along with the need for education, from my own personal experience, and the need for modern products to create Mm -hmm. wellness. And so we're all about modernizing menopause, And we love to say sparking menopositivity, which is a more positive outlook on this stage of life because women do want to be celebrated and we do want to talk about it. But we're really our three pillars are products, information, so education and inspiration through the form of community. So those are our three pillars. And a lot of that came about from not only our personal experiences, but our interviews with women. So before we even created the brand, we interviewed about 50 or so women across the US and just sat and listened to what they wanted out of a brand like ours. We learned a lot through that experience and that really helped shape Womanist today. It is so beautiful, the design, because I've spoken with lots (laughs) lots of other friends and other interviewees about what has been available. And it just looks very faded and very sad and old in the traditional sense. Right. And then your brand is slick and modern and enormously appealing, even the name. How did you settle upon the products that you provide? We wanted to hit the must-haves, and we really wanted to build the product line around the major symptoms of menopause. So we we started to think about, okay, everyone's skin changes dramatically during the stage because of the loss of estrogen and collagen in your skin. I know I used to have oily skin, and my skin became very dry. So we wanted to tackle that. We knew specifically that women typically hate their necks, so we wanted to come up with a, a neck serum of some sort. So Mm -hmm. that was obviously the impetus for creating Let's Neck, which is one of our top selling items. But we we came up with a list of problems or, you know, opportunities within even the skin category, your eyes, your body skin changes all over. So that's why we came up with the works. And we wanted to make sure a product even for the body was formulated with facial skincare levels of ingredients. We wanted to make sure that we put in the most active levels and the best ingredients. And so that's why we chose an advanced form of hyaluronic acid called Hyaclear 7, which is proprietary to our brand and niacinamide and you know things like ingredients that we knew were tried and true, but maybe in advanced form. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to make sure our product was excessively priced. So honestly, it's been a real challenge on the business front to really maintain a good margin because we are formulating such great product and our price points are very affordable. So it's always that squeeze, but we feel so strongly about that because women told us early on, make your products affordable so we can buy multiple products. So that's first category. And then we knew we wanted to create really efficacious supplements. I had personally tried black cohosh. Nothing was working for me. So we worked with some scientists and doctors to create uh, menopause, which is our all around menopause supplement. And we chose ingredients like pycnogenol, which is not a household name by any means, but it's a really, really great ingredient with 40 years of clinical studies. And it's proven to help with blood circulation. So it helps with hot flashes and night sweats. 
And so that's our most expensive item at $39.99 US dollars. <laughs> but it we're getting really good results hearing from women um, that they're really seeing a difference. So we knew we needed to tackle that. Sleep is another big issue. So we came out with a sleep supplement that's a timed release melatonin because the problem isn't going to sleep, it's staying asleep. And then um, hair, skin, and nail and joints was another supplement we created called Active Glow. And then the last category that we wanted to tackle was sexual wellness, because again, it's not that women want to always have products to prepare for sex. It's really about taking care of your vaginal skin because your skin dries. And again, I didn't even know that was a symptom because your skin changes all over your body, even your vaginal skin. So we came out with a vaginal moisturizer with hyaluronic acid for extra hydration. We have a vibrator, actually worked with the UK-based company called Love Honey on that. And then we're adding more products. So those are kind of our three categories, you know, skin and body, supplements and sexual wellness. And then we're really doubling down on adding more products, several every year that really help build out the line. And a lot of it comes from listening to our customers. We're constantly asking for feedback we're learning a lot about what women are dealing with and where they need the help. And we don't want to tackle things like weight loss because there's no product that can really help with weight loss. That's a big issue for women, mm -hmm. but we want to help with content. So we just actually did a whole series of articles about fitness and exercise and diet, not in the true diet sense, but like nutrition. Yes. Um, during you know menopause, because it's so important that women are aware of what menopause can do to your weight. And it's a lot of it is shifting. It's not necessarily weight gain, but it's shift in weight. So anyway, that's that's what we're all about is focusing on the on the symptoms. Well, again, it comes back to self care and looking after your lifestyle so that you can enjoy this period of life. Right, right. And far, 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 far beyond. The other thing that you mentioned was community. On Instagram, for example, the perimenopause menopause community is solid. Everybody looks out for each other. You can celebrate, you can whinge or moan. And it's a very happy, comfortable, almost celebratory place to be. But you've gone one step further and created your own community. How did you do that? Basically one woman at a time. <laughs> 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 what we found early on, and it makes sense because we're all in this together, is that <laughs> women really do want that personal connection. So the first thing we did is we brought on a woman, Ann Goebel, who Michelle worked with when she was in the magazine world. They worked together and Ann is 52 and has... I would say just exudes menopositivity. She is, you know, she's had her own life struggles, but she always has a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And she's a great representative of our brand and our ethos. And she runs our private Facebook group called the After Party. And we chose that name because we wanted to really feel like it was a special place, maybe a little removed from even our product brand, Womaness. And it's really about the, the idea is you have more fun usually at the after party than you yes. do at the party itself. So <laughs> that's the idea. But it's it's really meant to be a forum, a safe place for women to share their stories, hear from experts too, where we have partnerships now with several leading menopause experts in the US. One is at Mayo Clinic, and she's a wealth of information. So we share that information back. And then we also want to add a little humor along the way because women told us, you know, we don't want it like a sad tone to this. We really want it to be upbeat. We do want to laugh at ourselves a little bit. So that is really the premise of the after party. But we have a lot of other ways we're building community. We're actually very excited about doing events and gatherings, more intimate gatherings with women. So we found that to be really successful. It's a wonderful way for women to connect with one another. And actually the company of other women who are sharing an experience is proven to reduce stress, which mm -hmm. is obviously one of the foundations of getting through this life phase successfully and smoothly. With the events in mind and it being International Menopause Awareness Month next month, and then the 18th of October, International Menopause Day, what mm -hmm. are you doing to celebrate? 
I think we're going to celebrate the whole month of October. <laughs> so we are actually creating what we're calling the Menopositivity Tour. Mm -hmm. So think of it as like a rock tour. <laughs> so we're going on the road and we have really fun swag that we've created that's a rip off of kind of like the 80s rock tour. It's really fun. It's a very fun vibe. And we're going to Santa Monica, California. We're going to Dallas. We're going to Chicago. And we're doing events in partnership with Alta Beauty because our selling, we're selling our products now in Alta Beauty in the States, which has been an incredible partnership. So we're holding these kind of expert panels at Alta Beauty every weekend in October, and we're bringing on experts, our partners. And, you know, you can learn from Emily Morris, who's sex with Emily. So she's an expert, a doctor in sexual wellness. Then we have other fitness expert, Michelle and I are speaking. We have an OBGYN speaking. So in each market, we have different experts that have worked with us to speak. And we found that to be really successful. Women do want to hear from these experts. They want to be able to ask their questions. It's been so powerful, like I said, to have these intimate gatherings. So that's what we're doing. And then we're going to end menopositivity or the celebrate actually, you said October 18th, mm -hmm. with all of the leading menopause brands in the US. So there's a number of brands that have created telehealth businesses or other product companies, and we're all getting together for a panel wow. in Brooklyn, New York on October 18th. And it's going to be amazing to be with all of our peers to talk to, you know, not only the press, but just other people that are invited. And we think it's really important that we band together. On the surface, yes, we're competitors, but we really know it's more about collaboration than competition right now. I've seen your lineup for your Menopositivity tour. It's extremely impressive and oh, very exciting. <laughs> how do people get involved or how do they come on board or see what's happening? Well, they can definitely visit our site, info at womaness.com, and we'll get back to you right away. We have really, really pride ourselves in customer service and Goble, again, runs all of our customer service. So not only is she tied into after party, but she's constantly corresponding with customers. And then you can email me, sally at womaness.com, and I can help navigate too. If you're interested in attending any of these events, um, we are doing like a sign of genius because we want to make sure that we're corresponding with you know, the attendees of these events and, and make sure that they're up to speed on all the logistics. And so we'd love to see any of your listeners at these events or joining the after party. There's a number of ways that you can get involved. That is wonderful. I'm coming out to Santa Monica. So I'm super excited about that. I heard that. That's seeing so exciting. The, I get to meet you. Yes, absolutely. And seeing the start of it all is going to be brilliant. I'm really looking Fun. forward to it. One thing to mention, because it's not only the US, is that you are shipping internationally. Yes, thank you for reminding me to bring that up. So we are, that's our first step mm -hmm. in going international is just being able to ship international. <laughs> and that was a big project. But we're so excited because we've had a lot of women throughout the world reach out and ask, you know, how do I buy your products? And we've been trying to figure out how to do this economically for the customer too. So that's our first step. And then obviously our second step and third step is to eventually maybe have a partnership with a retailer in the UK. Um, we've had a lot of interest. Obviously the operational side is very complex. So but we, we do have a lot of interest, which is exciting. I have no doubt. What is the greatest life lesson that menopause has taught you so far? Oh my gosh. Well, it's just, there's so many amazing women. You know, this is professionally, because again, my professional menopause and my personal are all blending together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's hard to separate them. So I would just say we're so excited about what we're doing to help women and just how many incredible women we're meeting, you know, like you and, and every day we're constantly meeting more women. So this has opened up just a whole nother world for me personally and professionally and for Michelle. And we're just, we're realizing it's so enormous. You know, when we first started, it was 
okay, we're going to do products. And we know we have to wrap that in education and build a community. But this is like such a responsibility now. Women are really struggling. A lot of women are really struggling. And we have the responsibility to really help women. And, you know, we're not doctors by any means, but connecting, you know, helping through products, helping through education and support. And then we do have relationships with doctors that ultimately can help these women too. So we're just feeling this enormous responsibility. And it's it's been great personally, because I've not only met so many w- amazing women, but I've realized too, frankly, what I should have been doing in my 30s and 40s to take care of myself and what I'm doing now to really make you know any course corrections, uh, especially around my bone health. I've got to lift weights. Pilates is great, but I have to realize that I have to do a lot more weight training to really strengthen those bones. So it's just a lot more of taking the education that all the content that we're developing and applying it to my own personal life. So lifting weights is something very close to my heart. Yeah, I know. I know. We all need to be doing it. How do you see the face of menopause going into the future? Oh my gosh. I mean, I see, you know, such a variety of ages, right? Because think about the millennials are now aging into menopause. Mm -hmm. So it's so exciting to see. And, and, you know, I see so much, so much diversity, because I think menopause affects every woman, every race, every socioeconomic level. So I see this big quilt of all of these faces. Every woman has a story. And we love featuring those stories. There's just so much richness and so much texture to everything. And so I just, I get very excited. Like the visual, like I said, is this quilt of all these faces and stories. That's a really beautiful (laughs) image to have. Thank you. (laughs) Any parting pearls of wisdom? Well, for, I think your listeners, you know, just stay positive. Don't suffer in silence, reach out and, you know, really try to become informed, especially for the, for your younger listeners. It's never too early to start understanding the symptoms, maybe even vetting your doctor. Are they an expert in menopause? Many doctors that delivered your children are not experts in menopause. So even getting that, that medical staff lined up. And it could be even a nurse practitioner. It's so important to get kind of your support system lined up and become educated. And, you know, like I said, don't be afraid to talk about it. That's the first step is we all just need to be talking about it. Sally, thank you so much for your time. Lovely talking to you. Yeah, um, thank you. It was very fun and inspiring. Oh, well, you too. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, you too. Oh. Join Sally in her quest to spread insight, inspiration and menopositivity on her tour starting in Santa Monica on the 1st of October. For details, go to womanness.com or email Sally, sally at womanness.com. As I mentioned, I'll be joining the Womanness team on the 1st of October for the start of the tour and I would be delighted to talk to any of you lovely listeners who can make it there. I want to talk to you and hear about your experiences directly. So DM me or seek me out and I hope to see you there for a magnificent start to International Menopause Awareness Month. With that in mind, season four will roll straight on from season three, because how could it not continue through October? So stay tuned, sign up to the New Look newsletter on the website, realmenopausetalk.com, follow us on Instagram at realmenopausetalk, and subscribe to the podcast on the app of your choice so you never miss an episode. Thank you for listening. I hope to meet you, and I look forward to seeing you in season four. Thank you.